Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, my name is Kevin. Um, I work uh, for Graco, the manufacturer of the, um, the HP20 units. And um, we're just going to go over the basics on how to start this thing, get it going, spray with it, and then clean up. And uh, any questions you have, you know, just let me know, stop me, uh, or we can do it at the end, whatever's easiest. Um, so ha have you guys used this already, or are we just getting going with this, or has anybody used it? Um, we just got it up and running, but we haven't actually used it yet. Okay, okay, all right. So when you get the unit, you're gonna have um, the charger, you're gonna have two batteries. Um, these are the DeWalt batteries. They, um, each battery will last for about a gallon to a gallon and a half of material. So you can keep, you know, if you're spraying a lot more than that, keep one, an extra one on hand or on the charger. It'll charge in about 45 minutes. So you've got some liners, about five liners and a cup with the lid. And the lid also has a plug. So if you want to um, keep some uh, chemical in the cup, you can. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so you can keep, um, you can plug the, put the uh, lid on the cup and uh, keep that in storage. So to start, to get going, what you're going to do is you're going to put your chemical in the liner. Um, and you're going to want to mix that chemical. If, you, if you're going to mix it, um, we add the water first and um, then add your chemical and stir gently. You don't want to create a lot of foam in this because this unit, how it works is it, it pulls material from the top of the cup. There's no tube coming from the bottom. So we want to make sure we don't have foam going into the unit uh, and it, or it won't work properly. So put your chemical into the cup. Screw the lid on snug. Okay, and then this just goes, clicks onto the unit like that. <clears throat> On the side of the unit is your prime spray valve. Prime is down towards the cup. Spray, when you click it that way, is towards the tip. So it's just an easy way to remember if it's pointed towards the tip, you're in the spray, the spray mode. Okay. <clears throat> so the battery, slide this in here. Click the door shut. Um, now when you're priming the unit, what you're going to want to do is turn the unit upside down in the prime position. The unit is variable speed, so you're going to have a, um, a selector wheel on the back here that goes from 0 to 10. Uh, mo most chemicals, um, our solutions are going to spray fine at 2 to 3, so I got this set on 3. Um, you can set it higher, but it just creates more overspray and, and doesn't work as efficiently. So we always kind of use the lowest setting that we need. So three, three is good for most. Okay. So then you're going to sweep the trigger and you're going to see air come through there and that's the bleed all the air out of the system. Just a couple seconds. It'll be good. Now what you're going to do is you're going to turn the unit over and you're going to unsnap this cap right here and you're going to squeeze this, this liner until all the air comes out. And I didn't fill this up all the way, but if you did fill it up all the way, and then when, it's, when you see a little material coming out of there, that's when you, you close it. So we'll go upside down, prime it again, and now we should be ready to spray. So we'll go over to the spray position, just like this. And then we're ready to spray. I pull the trigger. I don't know if you can see that, but it's spraying out the tip. And now we've got a vertical fan. And if I want to go up and down, I can just move this to this way and I can go up and down. This way. So the nice thing about this bag system is that there's no tube here. So I can hold the gun at any angle and it won't lose draw from the fluid up into the pumping system. So it'll completely evacuate that bag. The bag will just get smaller and smaller and scrunch up until you're out of material. And then you can just refill the bag and um, or have a spare cup. Um, setting on the side and uh, just change cups real quick. Um, clean up on this is when you're done. Um, we want you to, you know, take you can take the cup off, um, save the chemical. I'm not sure on that as, as far as what you do on that. Um, but uh, all we want you to do is just rinse it out with water. Um, 
So you can take the cup off, empty it. You can turn it upside down in a sink and just have some water um, going in there and spray until, you know, you're only cleaning from here to here. So it's, it's very fast. So, um, and then just leave water in it. We just don't want you to leave chemical in it. You know, don't, don't leave the chemical in it. Just, just water is fine. And, um, and then put it away and, and you're, and you're good to go. So operation is very simple. Um, the, the one thing that's important though, is we don't want you to squeeze the trigger when there's no chemical, um, or water going through the system. So we don't want to dry run it because the, the fluid is the coolant and the lubricant for the whole pumping system. So that's where we could run into trouble is if we just pick it up and start squeezing the trigger and there's, there's no water or, or, or disinfectant in the unit. Um, so that, that you definitely want to be aware of that. Um, but other than that, it's, it's very simple to use. Um, it'll really increase your productivity, um, spraying the chemical and, um, you know, great go as the manufacturer of the machine. We just always say, follow the, the manufacturer's recommendations as far as how much material to put on the substrate is uh, to achieve the dwell time needed to um, kill the virus. Um, I think we were, this one was five minutes, I believe. The dwell time on this one um, was five minutes. So um, you really don't have to, the, the point of these machines is to um, saturate the surface, but we, we break the material up into real small droplets. So by doing that, we can ensure complete coverage of the substrate so you don't have to come back and wipe. And it just saves a lot of labor and time. And a lot of times when you wipe, sometimes, um, you don't want to wipe the material off. You have to leave enough on there. So it takes five minutes to dry to, to kill the virus. But this totally eliminates that step. You're just spraying things. You're leaving it alone. The, uh, the chemical will do its job and kill the virus. And uh, you can do large areas in, in a short amount of time. So any questions or? On anybody's, uh, does the sound pretty simple? Yeah, I have a... I have a question about, will that chemical mess up the uh, finish on the floor? Um, will it take the finish of the, on the floor? Oh, tall, tall no, floor. it will not. So it is a uh, neutral um, chemical. So the h docs itself uh, is safe for all surfaces, so all hard surface chemical. Okay. That's what we – I was concerned about that. Yeah, you'll be safe to apply that on all hard surfaces, anything that can get wet. Um, H docs is good for so. Okay. Can, can we go back to the process? Can you hear me? This is uh, Lynn Sprouse with the city school system. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Okay. Uh, after you prime uh, the machine uh, the first time and then bleed the air out, do you also then have to prime it again? Because you know we. No, we, no you don't. I, you don't. Okay. Yep. Right. If you squeeze the trigger and nothing comes out, then yes. Yeah. But uh, normally, no. You just, you know, once once the air is out of the bag, you, you can prime um, okay. and then just uh, flip over to spray and go. Yep. Okay. You know, so, sometimes it's just personal preference, but sometimes what you'll do is like I, I have all the air out of the bag now. Um, um, you could um, turn it over um, in the prime position just to make sure it works. And then go back and squeeze the air out of bag. But I, I think it's easiest just before you even start um, doing anything, just squeezing all the air out of the bag and going from there. Um, and that way you can go ahead and prime all the airs out. You can flick it, flip it back over and go to spray. So if the unit doesn't spray, um, nine times out of ten, it's it's a little air didn't burp all the air out of the bag. Um, something like that happens. So if it doesn't spray, don't, you know, don't keep pulling that trigger. Just, um, sometimes all you have to do is squeeze the bag a little. Um, and this doesn't happen very often, but I'm just trying to give you a little troubleshooting here. Um, or, um, open that, ac that, um, accu valve and uh, just squeeze again, make sure all that air is out. But, uh, but yeah, you could just do do that all in one step. You, you well, could, really, well, 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 well prime on the lower speeds we've been keeping it at 10 when we've been priming no i, I would keep it at three yep okay. yep that's plenty yeah uh and it, and it um yeah three three is um plenty it'll, it'll prime at any speed but generally speaking the lower the speed is better on the prime so because it do, doesn't generate as much heat um 
but it, it, you're fine doing it at 10, but that way you, you, you can just leave that alone at, at three, know where you're at. And then also the, um, it does come with three different um, nozzles. So it's basically a, a fine, a medium and a coarse. Um, but uh, I've got the uh, one that says 313 on it now. And um, I, I kind of pref personally prefer that one just because it gives you a little more control. But if you do want to go faster, um, and need a wider fan pattern you can you can go with these other nozzles as well and it'll it'll speed up productivity even though this one's pretty productive uh with the with the smaller tip in it but i would start with that smaller one the 313 and then you could always go up from there what other questions do our custodians have this is your chance yeah go ahead Yes, hang Can on. Can you repeat the, the, after we finish with the spray the cleaning? To clean it? Yeah. Uh, he, would like, uh, he would like for you to uh, repeat the process of after you're done and you want to clean okay. out the system. Okay. All right. So when I'm done, so I could either, you're going to take the cup off, right? If you have chemical left, um, I'm not sure, Dennis, do you, do you say dispose of the chemical once it's in here or? Once the chemical is pre-mixed, that uh, hydrogen peroxide is, is good for two weeks. So you can you can hold on to that. Just put the cap on it, uh, and you can still store it for next time use. Um, you know, and then put it aside, and then use water to, to go okay. through that. And, you know. Okay. So when you empty the cup out, or you know the it has a plug where you can just sit this on your shelf for for use the next time. If you do that, then we could either get a spare one of these for your cleanup or like I said, all you want to do is make sure water under a faucet, um, a hose or a cup even just pouring it in as you squeeze the trigger. So we just want water um, in the spray position, uh, pour it in while you're squeezing the trigger, it'll come out the tip and just flush out, I, I would say maybe four ounces of water. Um, that's all it's going to take. And then go over to the, the prime again, because we want to clean out that little, and just um, squeeze the trigger a couple a couple real quick times to make sure there's no um, chemical in there. And that's it. That's all, that's all you need to do. The, we, water will be in here, and it'll be ready for the next time. So cleanup is um, very, very quick on this. Does, does that answer the question? Um, how long is the dwell time on that to dry? So I believe Dennis said five minutes on that. Yeah, it's a five minute dwell time for for H docs um, for the COVID nineteen list, the EPAs and and list. Um, your the drying time is kind of depends on how much uh, product you put down. So if you oversaturate, it's going to take. And then you have your other variable factors of your airflow, uh, how humid it is, indoor, outdoor, stuff like that. So the product itself, how to dry, we want to make sure that it's on contact on the surface for five minutes that it hits the efficacy rates, kills everything, you're good. Um, and then we, you know, if we oversaturate it, it'll be wetter for longer, but that's kind of up to the uh, user and the environment. Okay, and there's no wipe down? Nope. So when we are disinfecting, it is a process, right? So we're gonna clean the soil first, okay? You're gonna clean your surface, and then you apply your disinfectant to, to sit on the surface. Uh, we only have to let that sit for five minutes to make sure it kills. Um, so you don't have to wipe down afterward. My recommendation, you do your daily um, cleaning procedures like you guys are accustomed to. Uh, and then at the end, you use your sandy spray with your h docs in it, spray everything down, walk out, and you're good to go. So that's all you need to do. Okay. Anything else, Danny? Do we have to wear any long sleeve? Or, yeah. or yes, do we have gloves? to wear any long sleeve protection? Nope, so um, that's... That's the beauty of HDOCs. It is the safest chemical and safest disinfectant out there. So it's all zeros across the board. Uh, it is pretty unique in that aspect because most disinfectants, you do have to use PPE. You have to do all these things, especially when you're applying in it in a misting or spray or device. Um, with HDOCs, you do not. So it's all zeros on the SDS. You don't have any PPE required. Uh, no face shields either. Nope. Okay. No. All right. So. Okay. That answers all questions. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Any other questions, guys? Anybody else? The the, the plastic sleeves, you know, we, we okay. got five of those. You know, how 
you know, we, we need to use those, I think, over and over, right? Because, you know, I'll have to order some eventually, but, you know, should those be used, you know, yep. a good many times? Yep, as many times. Yeah, they're they're this they're they're very durable. They're extremely chemical resistant. Um, so yeah, you, you'll eventually probably if you ever get a crease on the lip, for example, you'll want to replace it if it got crushed somehow or, or and there was a crease here so it didn't seal good. But yeah, you're you're going to be using these over and over and over again. It's they're you know they'll they'll crush up like this and then they'll they'll come right back over and over and over again. So, um, yeah, they're, they're pretty durable. They're, they're very durable. So, um, um, you know, I, I can't tell you how many uses everyone's a little different, but, um, you're, you're going to get a good, good life out of these for sure. And custodians, I will order extras so that we do have some extras, um, at some point. What else? Anybody? And the units, just, just to want to mention this too, in case you have some hard to reach areas, that it does come with this 18-inch uh, extension. So you just unscrew this off of the unit. Oh, I got it under pressure, I think. Whoa. She's a little tight here. So you'd unscrew that off the unit. Um, Screw this on, put your tip in here, and now you have a, an extended reach if you need to get up into a ceiling corner or, do, or doing something that, uh, you know, to keep you from bending over a lot if you're doing something low, low to the ground. So it does have that uh, also that comes with it. And these are specifically made for this unit. Um, so the, the, these units are made with um, uh, parts that uh, are impervious to, to most chemicals. So... Um, there's no aluminum or, or no metals that could corrode with, with, with these various chemicals. So if you happen to see a paint sprayer or something, you think that a, a part would work for this unit, they, they, they won't, they're, they're totally different. Um, so we want to make sure we keep all of this, uh, the parts with the unit that go with the unit. So, but it does include that as well. Yeah, that has metal threads. I've cautioned our folks, you know, you're going from metal threads on that extension rod to a plastic thread on the gun. You know, that scares me a little bit. Um, yeah, so they're, they're made um, to, you don't have to really torque that very because there's a seal in here. So yeah, this is a fiberglass nylon. So it's, it's pretty durable, but I, to your point, you know, obviously it's not metal on metal, so you don't want to, you know, get a pipe wrench and crank on it or nothing, but you know, just snug and, and, and that's, it's, it's pretty durable. It'll, it'll snug up pretty nice, but yeah, it's definitely, uh, definitely something to be aware of for sure. I hate to keep asking all the questions, but uh, these are just things that have come up. You, you mentioned mixing the chemical right in the little plastic sleeve. We've been mixing separately, like in another container. And yeah. then pouring, and, and then we have the dispensers that I just, you know, brought around to the dentist sent us. Can you actually mix the chemical in the little plastic sleeve? So you can do that. Uh, it's it depends on your way. Um, I would always recommend it foams less when you put the water in, and then the chemical, right? So it's about two and a half ounce um, to fill something like that to fill your reservoir. If you're using the dilute control dispensers that we gave you, it automatically dilutes the proper. Um, dilution rate of H docs into there. If you're doing it too fast, it could foam. Just make sure we're getting the foam out of there. So if you pre-mix and like Kevin mentioned, you could have a couple different reservoirs waiting. Uh, the foam will settle, um, get the foam off the top. You just want to wait to get that foam and air out of those reservoirs before we uh, prime it. So well, what would you recommend as far as mixing? It either we have customers do in uh, um, all different types. So if you put your water in there first and then add a couple ounces of chemical in there, you can do that. That would foam less. Um, you have your dilution control, which does produce a little foam because it's coming out so fast, but then it'll settle and you can get the foam out of there priming it too. So it really depends. Your accuracy rate, your dilution control is going to dilute it accurately every time. So it kind of eliminates that aspect because more is not always better. You don't want people overusing the product thinking it's going to, you know, work faster or stronger. That's not necessarily the case. Uh, and then we don't want them to use less enough to where we're not getting that uh, disinfectant kill claim out of there either. So, okay. all right. 
What other questions do you guys have? Anything? And I just want to mention too, on, on every unit, um, there's the, on this tag, on this handle, there's this QR code. And um, you can just hold your phone right up to that, turn the camera on, and it'll, it'll load, um, it'll load the uh, videos um, right on your phone and you can watch them as far as operation and troubleshooting okay. and all, all kinds of, there, I think there's five or seven different videos on there from start up to finish. Uh, so it's on every unit. It's in the, it's in the bag. It's on the instruction manual too. So that's a quick, uh, a quick way if you, if you need another resource there. And then there's a, an 800 number also um, directly to Graco if you have any questions or, you know, to troubleshoot in the field if something happens or um, they, they'll FaceTime you right from Graco Tech. Um, so we have some resources, you know, for you if, if you, um, you know, forget something or, you know, something's not working right for you um, that we can, we can help you with uh, to get through that. So. That's on the little blue tag that's on the gun. Yep, uh, right on the handle of the gun. Yep. yep. Well, you have to throw away your blue tags. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I have another question. Uh, we're supposed to be sanitizing in between our class changes with the spray bottles, but we don't have five minutes to wait for it to dry. We were told to wipe it as soon, you know, after we put it on. So how is that going to work? Yeah, the chemical is supposed to be setting. It, each each chemical, your disinfectants have 12 times on them, most of which are 10 minutes or more on most disinfectants. Um, so it, it will, this chemical, h docs you can let air dry, um, but you're going to want that five-minute contact time to ensure you're killing everything. Yeah, so, and see, we don't have that. We don't, we're not going to have that. I mean, it's going to be like five to 10 minutes. The kids is going to be coming in in between each class. And some of them is going to get there before the five minutes. So we were wondering about that because they want us to do it in between class changes. Right. Right. I mean, those are, those are, I mean, as long as it's waiting for your five minutes and it sits there and dwells on the surface for five minutes, it can be cleaned up afterward, but that's, you know, you're still going back to do that. If you're just spraying and wiping, you're not ensuring that that dwell time though. So we're not actually properly disinfecting. Um, you know, and that's, that's a common misconception in our industry. You know, you can't just spray your disinfectant down and wipe it up and think that we killed that 99.9999% that we're uh, disinfecting. So we want to ensure, you know, you, you guys are doing the work and, and everything else. We want to ensure that we're killing every germ possible, you know, up to right. what we're expected. So um, it, it should dry given those, the airflow and stuff like that. It, it shouldn't leave it. I just wouldn't oversaturate it. Make sure the sanding spray provides like a nice even coverage so you can accurately cover the whole area. Just I wouldn't overdo it because then it's going to take longer time to dry. Okay. we. I just wanted to make sure I understood that. Correct. Thank you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on the chemical or anything else we can help you with with the sanding spray? Okay. We're good. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Now's your chance. Some some of our schools have started using these. You know, others. You know, we we have them ready. You know, to go pretty much. Um, you know, so they will be using them. Um, for our custodians, I do plan to visit Thursday and Friday again this this week probably do the Harrisonburg High School side on Thursday and then the Skyline side on Friday. So, Deb, I'll talk to you on Thursday, you know, about the class changes um, when I visit okay. then. Okay. Okay. All Anything right. else from anyone? Okay. Uh, custodians, if you can figure out how to leave the meeting, <laughs> um, you know, I'll let you, let you do that. Um, I do want to ask Dennis a couple other things. <clears throat> Should be down in your screen, lower right-hand corner. If you move your mouse, it says leave. For our people, 
So just move your mouse. You'll see the leave, red leave button down in the corner. Just leave the meeting. I'm not sure if everybody has, has left, you know, or not. Okay. Uh, I do appreciate, you know, you all doing this, you know, for our, our custodians. You know, we were kind of at different places in our school division as far as, as how many have been using them. You know, our expectation is that they use the Santa Spray equipment, uh, you know, to disinfect, you know, high touch surfaces. The dry time is going to be a big, you know, a big thing. You know, like the high school mentioned, you know, between class changes, we'll have to figure out. Uh, how to do that. Um, I think everybody's pretty pleased, you know, with, with the guns. Uh, Dennis, I, I'd emailed, we do have a couple units. One, the plastic down at the battery was a part. So how, you know, if, if, if I have to return a gun, you know, how do I, how do I do that? Yeah, use that, uh, that Graco, and um, I can send you that link again for the, uh, the Graco customer support. Okay. Um, they do a great job with their, with their department. They're, they're pretty responsive okay. in that. And make sure they, they understand the priority of everyone using these things and they want to get you up and running. So okay. do a good job on that. Kevin, do you have any different recommendations? on? Yeah. Um, you know, I would start with that uh, 800 number um, from Graco. And right. normally what they'll do is uh, they'll get the information of the gun and they will, um, they will send you out a, a new gun. If, if um, it's damaged or it's not working for some reason, um, it's something, you know, they can't troubleshoot on its own. Obviously, if it's broken or there's a piece like that, you know, that's not fixable, they, they will take care of that. Um, for, if for some reason you can't, uh, it, it can't be resolved, you know, you can get me in, or Dennis involved and we, we can get you something uh, pretty quickly. So, um, so yeah, any, any issues that, that come up, I would have um, to start with that uh, tech line because the one thing that we're trying to be conscious of is, is you know, we don't want... Um, the chance of a, a machine coming back to a, a distributor or, or somebody else and, and have a live virus on, you know, chances are small, but we're trying to be extra careful with that. And that's why we're having our tech service just, you know, we dedicated a team for the Santa spray units of tech guys and, and they're really good about uh, taking care of any issues uh, right over the phone. So. Okay. All right. And then our, our schedule, you know, is, is, is going to be different. You know, we're just bringing back limited number of students on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Um, you know, you heard the class change concern. Um, you know, some of our classrooms may not leave the classroom, you know, all day, you know, once they get there, others may. So we're, we're trying to figure out, you know, uh, the windows, you know, that the custodians will have to actually get in and, and, and clean and disinfect. Um, Wednesdays will be a no school day. Uh, for students, so I'm anticipating that would be a real heavy use with the Santa spray equipment. And then I've told our folks certainly before school, with before school cleaning and after school cleaning, uh, when when there's no students around, you know, to use use the gun. We're just trying to figure out how to do it when students are are there. Uh, so I'll, I'll work with our custodians, you know, on that. Any you know any advice? Um, you know, about that when people are in the building? Yeah, so, I mean, HDOX is pretty safe, but obviously we don't want people just sitting on, you know, on chemical, right? So yeah. uh, your, your different practices have varied um, coming across these different school districts that we're dealing with. So some are staying in the same classrooms all day to where they disinfect at the end of the day. Um, and that way it's clean for them when they come back the next day. Uh, if you're doing class changes and you want to disinfect before next, the next person uses that desk or, you know, people are coming in and out, um, you just want to make sure that they at least get that five minute dwell time. And then I don't know your cooperative, collaborative cleaning procedures with maybe some teachers that are involved to wipe up afterward if, it, if they need to once it hits that five minutes um, or let it air dry. I would just caution them to make sure to cover the surface evenly but not oversaturate. Yeah, yeah. So it, it should dry in less than 10 minutes on its own as long as they're not oversaturating. Wow. Uh, some of our schools reported 15 or 20 minute, you know, dry time. They're probably oversaturating, right? Yeah, that would be my guess. And, and again, it does depend on, it depends on the user, how much chemical you're applying, your, uh, 
you know, dehumidity, inside, outside, airflow, air conditioning, stuff like that. So there are some, quite a few variables in that. Um, but it, it could take that long if, if they're, you know, if all those things line up that way. So I would just caution them. They probably don't need to be applying that much chemical that thick yeah. surface. Just making sure they're evenly covering it. And really, it does, they do a great job of that even coverage of the Santa spray. So just one pass will do it yeah. on that desk. Um, you see some, a lot of times when you see those longer drive times, uh, people are going back and forth three, four times on the surface. All right. Now distance from the surface, you know, I've, I've told them start at a foot and, you know, then maybe come back from there. You know, how, how far from the surface should they be when they spray? Yeah. Gre Gre Greco recommends about 12 to 18 inches. Uh, okay. right in that yeah. range that's uh, from the substrate um any more you you're going to be you know getting a lot of chemical in the air that never never gets to the substrate so that's that's a good practice 12 12 to 18 inches yeah okay all right well i can't think really of anything else i appreciate you know you guys doing this um i'm not sure how many of our folks were actually you know online uh hopefully a good many uh, I, I figured out, you know, how to train and get these things set up. You know, I'm a semi-retired elementary school principal, so if I can figure it out, yeah. <laughs> you know, I think I think other, you know, other folks can figure out, you know, how to get these machines up and, and running. So if we have any other questions, we'll let you we'll let you know. Yeah, absolutely. Don't hesitate. Uh, Kevin and I are here to help. So I think the Definitely. primary issue just getting started with is the priming, making sure there's no foam. Yeah. So once we're, once we're past that, making sure that we're not running that pump without um, liquid going through it. We don't want that pump to overheat and burn up. So, but we should. Uh, they're pretty easy machines after that, and they and they are durable. So. Okay. Yeah. Get going there. Yep. All right. Well, thanks. Guys. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank so you. Appreciate yeah. it. Be safe. Right. Okay. You too. Take care. Thank you.